Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Suffer Alliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School back out here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom area. What I've got here is a new product that I'm working on. This is the final pre-production prototype, which means that it may not be in the exact color that the final production model will be in, but all aspects of it, the sewing, the grommet placement, the size, the dimensions, all of that is exactly as the production models will be. And this one is in black. The production models will be in dark earth brown to match our pack. What this is, is this is a bed sleeve per se. Very similar to what I've used in lots and lots of videos past. Very similar to things that have been developed and I've sold with other companies like Tent Smiths and things like that, Duluth Pack. The difference is this one has a few design features that make it unique. It's also made from 500 denier and it's 100% waterproof. So it can be used multifunctionally. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But the way it's made to be used initially or the initial design intent behind this before modification was that it was a solid tube, approximately eight feet long, that you could slide timbers into to make a raised bed. I'll walk you through this raised bed really quickly and then we'll lay in it for you. You would put a tarp across between the two trees to cover this over so you wouldn't get rained on and things like that and keep weather off of you. But this setup that I'm using now can be done with absolutely no cordage. And that's kind of an important modification to this raised bed I want to show you. It's something that I came up with myself and I want to show you today in this video as well. So stay with me, we'll get started. Okay, so this raised bed, again, not using any cordage, relies on all things to be friction fit. So instead of cutting three poles to make a tripod and having to lash that tripod together, what you're doing is you're using a standing tree so you're finding two trees that are far enough apart that you can put this raised bed between them, something a little bit longer than the raised bed itself so that you can put a tarp over it to cover that raised bed. In this case, we're probably about 10, 11 feet apart. And then you're gonna cut two forked sticks that are approximately two and a half to three inches in diameter to lay into each other on that tree to create a friction, a friction fit against the tree. And you're gonna angle those legs back toward the raised bed at about a 45 degree angle in and a 45 degree angle out. And that's where you're going to put the cross timbers at for the raised bed that you're gonna slide through that tube. And you just need two nice green timbers or at least hardwood timbers, even if they're standing dead, that are three to four inches in diameter that can support your weight. And then you'll just slide those across, lay them on the raised bed platform once they're in the tube and everything is then friction fit. So you need no cordage to hold this bed. So what you can see now is you've got two forks on this end, two forks on this end, interlocked on the tree, facing again forward and out at about 45 degree angles with two timbers slid through this 500 denier sleeve. And then they are dropped on top of those forks to make a friction fit. And now I can just take this, lay right down in it. And I have a raised bed platform that I can sleep in very comfortable. I can move any way I want to move in this thing. And I'm not going to hurt it a bit. If I'm a side sleeper, that's fine. If I'm a stomach sleeper, that's okay. If I'm a back sleeper, that's great. Get in and out of it. It's not a problem whatsoever. The only thing it's going to move is side to side. But once you lay down on it, it pushes this down and locks it into the forks on those sticks or locks it into the sticks that are forks so they can't move once you're in it. The only time it's going to move side to side is initially before you get into it. Once you put weight on it anywhere, it's going to lock in place. So this is kind of giving you a view through the trees. You have a tree here with two forks locked on that tree, 45 degrees this way, 45 degrees this way, locking the timbers in that are through the sleeve. The same thing on the back end to support the bed. Okay, both ends of this tube, like I said, are open, obviously. And there are grommets all along the top and bottom. There are also a series of grommets on the side, which all I did was put a stick in there as a stay to keep them together while I was using it as a raised bed. The reason for that split is so that this can now be used as a bedroll that you can get in and out of. So you've got a split like you would open a sleeping bag. So that you can actually put blankets 
sleeping pad, whatever you want to inside this and it becomes a waterproof bivy bag. You can then sew up the bottom if you want to, lacing it up with paracord and then tuck it under because it's plenty long. It's like I said, it's over eight feet long. So you can tuck those under if you want to. You can also use this as a ground mattress in conjunction with blankets by stuffing it with debris and again, lacing up the ends to use this as a ground mattress. All right, so to turn this into a hammock, we're gonna take one piece of cordage that's got some length to it. I've got about a 15 footer here. And I'm going to double that up in the middle. And I'm gonna take my middle eyelet and I'm just going to put a loop through there, just like this. It doesn't have to be a very big loop, just enough to give me some stick out. Then I'm gonna take the rest of this and I'm gonna go one side this direction, one side this direction. I'm gonna weave it in and out, in and out, in and out, go the opposite way, in and out, in and out, in and out, and come back to where the tail's sticking out this end. So I'm just taking this and I'm going in, then I'm going to the back, and then to the front. When I get down there, I'm gonna pull up all the slack, keep my loop, Come around and now I'm going to go the opposite direction. So I'm going to go through the front just like this, pull up the slack, through the back, through the front, and through the center on the back side. So these tails are sticking out the opposite end and opposite side. That my loop is so now i've got my loop here my tail here i do the same thing on this side now i've got two tails sticking out here and a loop put those two tails through the loop and draw it up and that's going to give me that pocket for my hammock now for this demonstration i've put pathfinder tree straps on the trees just to be more conscious of the tree itself I have hung on 550 cord many, many times. If you are gonna put this 550 cord on a carabiner attached to an atlas strap or a Pathfinder tree strap, then you're still hanging off the 550 cord, whether you use the 550 cord on the tree or not. So putting a strap on the tree is more for safety of the tree, proper education, than it is worrying about hanging straight off this 550 cord in an emergency scenario. However, if I'm planning to camp, I'm gonna take the right stuff with me. Now to attach a carabiner to this hammock, we're just going to fold it over and go up the line. That's going to give us a marlin spike hitch on the line. And that's what we're gonna put our carabiner through. Just like this, pull it around. We pull that down, we now have a marlin spike hitch on this carabiner. Now we can pull it up to the strap to the desired location that we want it to get the right hang angle and we're good. That's probably just a little bit high, but we're going to stretch a little bit, so I'm okay with that. So once you've got this thing set up, your hammock basically becomes this. So I'm just going to sit in the middle of it here, give myself plenty of slack there. There we go. This is about the right height for me. I like to be able to sit in my hammock, tie my shoes, things like that, have a place to sit off the ground. This is about perfect. Now, this is not a conventional hammock. So it's not going to be as wide as a conventional hammock. However, it is plenty wide. You can see I can comfortably lay in this, no problem at all. And there's plenty of length. My feet aren't hanging out of it and things like that. There's plenty of length on this thing. Even if I wanted to put my feet all the way out, there's plenty of length on this thing. So the point is it makes a great makeshift hammock as well. So you've got a piece of gear that We'll do lots and lots of things for you that's gonna fold up very, very small and ride about that big around about that long on the bottom of that pack. And you've got straps with that new backpack. That Scout backpack's got straps on the bottom to be able to put this bed roll, bed sleeve on the bottom of it. And you have a very good piece of multifunctional gear. And that was the whole key to this thing was to make sure that it was multifunctional in nature. And now I'm gonna show you another quick trick of the trade, if you will. Remember I told you that these lines that I fed through this hammock were about 15 feet long. So I've got plenty of tag here and I've got two tails on this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come down to the other end of that 
and I'm going to tie a bowline knot in it. And I'm going to use that bowline knot to tie a makeshift ridge line over this hammock with one of the tails from the other side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this bowline loop, we're going to pull it down here toward the center of the hammock. We're going to take one of these lines that has a toggle on it, and we're going to trap the toggle in this bowling loop, just like we did on the ridge line. And that's going to give us a static ridge line right over the top of this hammock. So that now we have a ridge line that's attached to the system. We didn't have to tie a separate ridge line. It's already there. Remember, we still have one tag line on each end of this thing. So that is going to allow us to avoid prussic loops. Now, the other part of this is it has to be the right dimension and size so that a normal helicon or military style poncho will work as the tarp so that we can carry a poncho and have a tarp for our hammock at the same time if we choose to go that way. Now, we're going to take this tarp, we're going to put it over this bad boy, and we're going to put it over in a diamond fashion, not a square. We know it's not going to fit in a square. And we're just going to take one side of that diamond all right, now we're going to take the corner of that poncho. We're going to bring it all the way down, almost using the second line as a rope tackle. We're going to bring it down past the hammock, and we're just going to half hitch it off just like that. And then we're going to go to the other side and do the same thing. Now we're going to grab the other corner, put it through the grommet, and we're going to pull it down. And we're going to pull it down to where it's about six inches past the hammock and we're gonna tie it off. And then we're gonna use our other end to tighten it down. So we'll go back to the other end real quick and just tighten it up. Pull another half hitch in here, call it good. And now I've got coverage over that hammock at least eight or 10 inches on both ends with just a normal military poncho. Okay, so with that, we've set up an entire system and we've made it very simplistic so that we can use what we already have. We don't have to carry anything extra. We've got a tarp that is our poncho that we have for rain gear. And depending on whether we want to go to the ground or to the air, we have something multifunctional that will handle both of those scenarios. Setting up the ridge line the way that we did, leaving ourselves long tags when we hooked this hammock system up, gives us the advantage of not carrying a ridge line because we already got it attached to the hammock by attaching that solid ridge. Now you might say, we really don't need that static ridge line because you can just pull both ends of the tarp using tag ends of those hammock lines, which you can. However, Having that static ridge line in there when you pull the tarp out to stake it out is going to give you that structured ridge that you're not going to have otherwise. So we've built a pretty multifunctional system here that works really well in conjunction with itself, depending on how we manipulate the system, to either sleep on it as a mattress, to sleep in it as some type of waterproof baby or cowboy bedroll, to be able to make a hammock out of it, to make a raised bed out of it. We have lots and lots of versatility with this, up to and including a hammock system that we can set up to be very, very functional just by giving ourselves long tag lines on that as well. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Thanks.